In a previous video, we learned how to name ionic compounds. In this video, we're going to be writing formulas for ionic compounds. So first, determine the charge of both the anion and the cation. Then, we'll assign appropriate subscripts to ensure the compound is electrically neutral. A way to ensure the compound has the right number of positives and negatives is to use the zigzag method. So you'll need your periodic table. And remember, on top of each group, there's a number written. And that number tells you the charge of those atoms when they form ions. So for example, calcium always has a charge of plus 2. And fluoride always has a charge of minus 1. And once again, you know this because on the top of your periodic table, in group 2, where calcium can be found, you've written plus 2. And on the far right of your periodic table, where fluorine is found, in that group or family, you've written minus 1. So fluoride has a charge of minus 1. So if calcium has a charge of plus 2, how many fluorides would we need to balance out plus 2? Well, of course, we would need two fluorides. So you could think about it in terms of making it electrically neutral. How many of each do we need? Or you can simply use the zigzag method. Most students decide to use the zigzag method simply because it requires a little less thought. So remember, fluoride has a charge of minus 1. So it's like we take that 1 and we bring it down behind calcium. And then we take this 2 and we bring it down behind fluoride. So it's CA1F2. And notice we're really not writing the 1. The 1 is just implied. OK, let's write the formula for barium phosphide. So find barium on your periodic table. It's in group 2, and it has a charge of plus 2. Phosphide, that's the ion of phosphorus. And phosphorus, when it forms an ion, has a charge of minus 3. So let's go ahead and zigzag these charges. We'll bring the 3 down, in front of, down behind barium and the 2 down behind phosphorus. So when we write the formula, it's BA3P2. So take a moment to understand exactly how we're crossing these charges. And I, I know that eventually we get to the point where we just do this quickly. But remember, the point behind doing it is to ensure that barium phosphide is electrically neutral or has the same number of positives and negatives. All right, we have cobalt 2 chloride. Now you'll need to recall, what does this mean, cobalt 2? Now, most students default to what they think it means, and they think it means that there are two cobalts. But you've already watched the video, so you know better than that. You know that this Roman numeral 2 does not tell us that there are two cobalts. Rather, it tells us what the charge on cobalt is. So cobalt here has a charge of plus 2. Now, cobalt's a transition metal, so there would be no way of knowing what the charge was unless it was given to you. And chloride is in group 7A, and it always has a charge of minus 1. So let's zigzag them. So CO, Cl2, you need two chlorides to balance out one cobalt. All right, magnesium oxide. Here's the symbol and the charge. The symbol and the charge. I would encourage you um, not to go straight from the words to the formula, but start um, by writing the symbol and the charge. You may find that to be very helpful. In fact, if you discover that you're not getting some of these problems correctly, then I would suggest you it's necessary for you to write the symbol and the charge above the words. Um, it's very helpful because that kind of, I don't know, helps us accomplish this in the scaffolding type fashion where we look at it in, in smaller increments or steps. So. This is a ratio that, that we have, um, one calcium to two fluorides. What's the ratio here if we zigzag this two and two? Well, two to two is one to one. 
So as it turns out, what we're able to do is to reduce these. So it's just mg1, o1. Remember that um, these represent a ratio. That means for every one magnesium, we have one oxide. All right, let's do aluminum oxide. Aluminum has a charge of plus three. Oxide, as you remember, has a charge of minus two. So when we cross them, it's written as Al2O3. Now let's do lead four oxide. Once again, lead four doesn't tell us that there are four leads. It tells us what the charge on lead is. And the charge on lead is plus four. The charge on oxide is always minus two. So we're going to zigzag these things. So you may expect to see subscripts of two and four. But remember that this will be a ratio of lead to oxide. So we can reduce this not to four and two, but to two and one. So when we cross them, it should be written as PbO2. 